come to save the day. The Mighty House crew is on the job. This is Mighty House. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about the decking. We've been, uh, we've told you how to do the foundation. We've told you how to frame this thing. And now you're ready to start putting the decking down. You, the, the surface you see. Our first picture is, so you've got this. No, you've got this right here. No, Please what? subscribe, ring the bell. Oh, yeah, okay. So here you go. You ready? <sighs> you come back and do it again, or you want to just cut it in? Oh, all right, we're back, and we're going to talk about decking, the actual part you walk on, the part you see, this nice surface right here. That's what we're going to be talking about today. Before we do that, hit that subscribe button, click on the bell, so that way you get notified next time uh, we post something new. And, of course, you can always leave like, us a comment below. Like railings. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That'll be the next thing. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. What do we got first there? Well, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by Bondix. Bondix? Uh-huh. My glasses fell off my head today, hit the ground, both <laughs> lenses popped out, and on one side, the screw came out. Yeah. So I literally took and held the frame together. I put the Bondix glue very neatly around the frame, Yep. hit it with the UV light, otherwise we wouldn't be doing this tonight. Wow. So there you go, right there. I'm still going to be gentle with my glasses, but yes, that Bondic put my glasses back together is better than the old tape. <laughs> yes, it is. So there you go. And here's a, this, this is a Mighty House special right here. That's what I used right there, that little yeah. kit. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Bondic. All right. So there you go. Thank you, Bondic. <laughs> so anyway, so starting off, you're ready. For, we talked about your framing, how to frame your centers and how to do your posts. We've done all that in the past. So right. we're ready to put boards on this deck. Yeah, we've, you've only been uh, walking on it for the last two weeks like this. <laughs> go, go on, like, well, if you got big feet, it's easy to cover. But <laughs> it's, right. it's really hard to do in your stiletto heels, though. It's difficult. So in order to keep this at a, a reasonable length video, we would really like to, we're going to try to fly through this. So there's lots of options. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. We'll check it out. Right. Uh, but let's let's just jump right into this. I mean, let's. Okay, let, so. Let's. Let's just go over the decking options, the size of the board. Mm -hmm. We'll start with start that. And I think what you used to see a long time ago, everybody just threw suit, threw down some two by fours. And yep. you know, uh, you can do a standard two by four deck. This one's a nice layout. Um, mm -hmm. And you can do them all different kinds of patterns. We'll talk about that later. But standard two by four, you just you, you put them down, you took your nail gun and went bang, 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 and shot those right. shot those deck boards down. And same thing, two by four, two by six, right? Right there. There's your two so, by six. Okay. So Very simple. What made a two by four or two by six decking a great thing is that you you could put your joists on two foot centers. Okay. Yeah. Because as a two inch inch and a half nominal material, it could span twenty four inches no problem. However, cost of lumber has increased, so mm -hmm. two buys are become kind of cost ineffective. Right. Um, and the other thing is most of them are allergic to drying out. <laughs> they definitely get a mind of their own. I mean, the lumber quality has gone way downhill in the last 15 years from when yep. we started or 25, 30 years from when we started actually building decks with two buys. The stuff now, I mean, it just, it'll pull nails and screws right out just because oh, yeah. it wants to go a different direction. So not exactly our favorite. But right. they had just planted those option. trees when you started. <laughs> yeah. True story. That's just it. You're absolutely correct. Old growth versus fast growth. <laughs> yes, they and are. And next. And then you can go with the five quarter decking. So it's it's five and a half inches wide, but it's only an inch and an eighth, or nominally it's an inch, probably inch. thick. So and this will be a little bit more stable than a standard two by six. So you get that two by six look, but it's a little right. thinner. You get uh, it's a little less expensive than a two by six, and now it's going to be finished nicer too. So, uh, a two by six is is a is a great option right there, or or I'm sorry, five and, quarter by six. Right, and most of the decking we're going to talk about whether it's uh, whether it's a man made product or you know composite whatever, most of it's sold as five quarter. So it's basically one inch nominal thick, Correct. which means you really do need to be on sixteen inch centers. Uh, in some cases, if you're going to diagonals with sp uh, particular products, you might want to tighten things up. Or as we talked about in the framing episode, 
building in ledgers, doubling up ledgers so that you got a, a nailing surface for those joints where, say, where that border is right there. Right. Now, you might need a little more meat there. So it changes your framing a little bit. Keep that in mind. Correct. Next up is tongue and groove. So before we talk about it, right over Rich's shoulder there, there's the tongue That's part, a... there's the groove part, and then you've got, the, this is a beveled edge, which you can use, but then there's also, if you flipped it upside down, you could use a square edge. And they also have another one that's called an eased edge, so it's just rounded over. So you could do something like that, and then you end up with this look right here, which is like that. So there's an eased edge, one by four. It didn't work for you. You got it. I don't know. Click. I'll try it next See? time. See, there. <laughs> Go like that. Damn. So there's your there's your one by four, or you could do a one by six. But anyway, it looks like that. See right there. So there's your one so by four. Do you not have any concerns? Well, see, like that to me. Now here's another caveat. That to me would be used great for a front porch with a roof. Yes. It would not do that in an open area deck because you're not going to allow water to drain off or through. Correct. Correct. And but your typical wrap around porch. That's the true look. And I just put this on my front porch. One by four tongue. Did you? Groove. Yep. Yep. And Seriously? Yep. I had one by four. Man, the boss has got to be so happy. Was it 32 years you finally did the front porch? <laughs> well, the front porch, I had the one by four fur on there, but the first six feet got so weathered and, and it was, I was sorry. All the fur fell off? What? Yes. So it was starting to get really bad. So it was like, it was time to just cut it all off. The back six feet was fine, you know, the part that was really covered. So I went with the, uh, the PVC, uh, Timber Tech, <laughs> one by four tongue and groove, and it's stained mahogany color, looks incredible. So- I bet it does. And, and now it's gonna be durable, last a long time, we don't have to worry about it. So, right. okay, back to the show. You can also do a one by six <laughs> tongue and groove, and this is actually wood, um, but okay. there's that's a composite. Let's go back. Now, let's talk about this. What's this thing? What's that right there, that line? Um, that's because he bought all 10-footers. He <laughs> laid them all down, went 10 feet. Then he used cutoffs to do the rest of the deck. Why don't, don't you do want to, besides it not doesn't don't look good. Don't be that guy. Besides well, it doesn't it looks look like, good. Why it do looks you want like to crap. It? No, you want to stagger your joints. So, you know, the, your first board, you could cut it where it breaks, let's, let's say roughly four foot. Then you put a 10-footer in. Right. Then you want to go try to do thirds. Now on 16 centers and 10 foot boards, thirds don't work. 12s work great. Yep. So that's why we order 12s because it's multiples of four. So then you put one at four, eight, 12, and then you do that so that you can stagger those joints. And even if you did them on 16s and alternated them, you know, you went five steps and then back to the beginning in five steps, but don't ever, ever break them all on a single joist. Aside from it looking like crap, it actually weakens that joist. Yes. Because the span of the board going across it helps. It can't go down without pulling on the other two. That one can go down no problemo because everything is broke on it. Right. So right. that's right. You've got not all a bad looking deck in there. other than that whole line. Right. And this part could slide away from this part and just split right on that right on that floor joist. Right. It doesn't bond it all together. And it's not carrying the load evenly and equally that way. So and it's ugly, so I'm gonna move yeah. back in the way. Yes. All right, next picture, because we don't like Wait. looking at that one. There you go. <laughs> now, okay, so we've talked about some of the mo more common styles or sizes mm -hmm. of decking. And now you have this is a five quarter by six pressure treated. So you get that beautiful right. green look. And people love so that. So it green blends look. into the yard. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's just, uh, grass just grows straight on out. Okay. It's so again, that stuff, because it comes as is supposedly kiln dried and then pressure treated, but they really need to re-kiln dry it because <laughs> it'll come to you with 105% moisture content. You know, right. you want to check the moisture content, hit the board. Yeah. If it splashes you, you don't want to gap those. You want to put them together as tight as you can. Right. Because when they dry out, they're going to shrink. Right. And then, and then when you're wearing your stiletto heels out there, you'll fall through and break an yeah. ankle. So that's not good. But I will say, in, in, yeah. let me do this. <laughs> Oh, you did it. Right. You can also do the cedar it. tone. So if you don't like that's the green right. look. That's a brown treated. Yeah. And that's why most of your box stores will carry the brown treated. Yep. yep. I don't even see that much green treated other than structural lumber. Yeah. No, I mean, it, we just did one. They, the client asked well, for we'll the We'll have to treated. talk about 
the, the little tags and what it means, but that's a whole nother show. Correct. Correct. There you go. So, um, okay. So go to the cedar one, which I believe is next. Yep. Red cedar. There you go. That's yeah. beautiful. Look at okay. the color tones in that. So what I wanted to talk <laughs> about was how beautiful that red cedar deck is, but we've, and we've all built them. And yep. the day we get done with them and that homeowner signs the check, everybody's happier than anything. Yep. Problem is, is it dries out pretty bad. It can turn silver. It will and turn it shrinks. Yep. It will turn silver. So if you want that cedar tone, it gets tough because you want to use a good quality oil-based stain like Cabot or something like that. You can kind of keep that color. And the railings won't change all that much. It's usually just the decking. Right. But I've also found that if you go with the green treated and use a good Cabot transparent stain after a year of letting it age out, you know, dry out, right, it'll look like that. Yep. So and cedar's gotten kind of expensive, not that treated lumber's free. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I just mix feelings now about using cedar because, I mean, I've done some really fancy railings and posts and things, and I've just been so disappointed in the amount of shrinkage. Right. It does. It you shrinks know. a lot. And I've put railings together, and then I come back the next morning, and there's a quarter-inch gap in it. You know, it's a, it just overnight, it just dried out and separated. So yeah. So... It's hard, you know, that's why I think a lot of us move towards pretty much composite decks. Right. And then composite railing systems yep. so that, you know, we could actually, they were more stable. Sure, sure. Yeah, you know, and so, it just less callbacks. So, so. there, another, another, if you're going to stick with wood, we can also do the, the redwood, which looks like that. And that's Smart. fresh. That'll turn gray and gray out just like the cedar. So initially it looks really, really good, but then... Again, it'll just turn gray. It's super bug resistant, and you can yeah. still put, uh, uh, you know, oil on those and, and get that color back. Correct. So. Correct. And then there's Ipe, buy sawzall blades, buy a lot of sawzall blades, buy a lot of circular saw blades, um, and, and drill And pre-drill every damn hole. <laughs> yeah. You cannot run, you can't drive a 16-penny nail through that stuff. No. So I've done decks where we've done borders. So, you you know, you lay your field and then you snap your lines to cut for the border yep. and burn through brand new carbide blades, just trying to cut the border, you know, the, the, the pieces off to put the border on. Yeah. It's an amazing product. It's gorgeous. It's termite proof, hurricane proof. It's right. pretty much indestructible. Right. Um, only takes a little bit of oil, linseed oil to keep it looking great, but it is expensive. It's heavy. So remember when we were talking about framing 40 yeah. pounds per square foot and yeah. for per, you know, dead load right. and 10 for the deck, you need to kick that number up closer <laughs> to a 60 pound, you know, per square foot dead load. Right. Cause it's that heavy, yeah, but fun. it's gorgeous. It it's fun to beautiful. work with. Yeah. yeah. So uh, just letting you know, if you pick this, you're going to need sawzall blades. You're going to need a lot of blades, a lot of drill bits, uh, tiger yeah. wood. That's kind of, it's got a lot of color, a lot of character to it. And that's also that was a golfer. <laughs> no, not Tiger Woods. Tiger, oh, Tiger Wood. Wood. Singular. Yes. Yes. And right. it, it has okay. a lot of so, graining and stuff to it. That looks pretty cool. So that guy had an eight foot deck and he bought 16 foot boards. He cut them in half. And that's why those two match instead of throwing one four boards forward or back. Yep. See how he did Don't that. Don't be that guy either. <laughs> Think about what you're doing. Yes. How is it going to look when you're done? How about that Brazilian teak? Look at that. Yeah, that's gorgeous. See, now that guy laid that stuff out. Yes. Nice, nice color variations to it. Looks beautiful. Yeah. Uh, then your standard old-fashioned mahogany. Mahogany? Mahogany. So there Does you anybody, go. Can you get mahogany decking anymore? I don't know. I'm sure you could order it. Hmm. You know, you'd have to order it. I mean, I had to order the You can't the get Honduran cream. mahogany. You can get Brazilian mahogany, but yeah. it isn't the same animal. Uh, so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a beautiful wood as well. Tight grain, lots of red and black spec. I mean, I love it. Well, the deck we just did, we had to pre-order it because it wasn't enough in stock. So we ordered all the decking and everything because there just wasn't around. And it no. took three weeks to get yeah. it all that we needed. So, sure. um, you know, planning is all going to be part of this and make sure you order the, you might need to order the stuff. Now, you mean just because the snow thawed, you don't just start building your deck. You might want to start planning now and right, that's right. Get it things ordered so that when it's the weather turns, you can actually start. Right, so that you're ready. 
you know, make sure it's sitting at the lumber yard ready to go or, or stacked crazy up Crazy thought, planning yep. ahead. <laughs> yeah. So then, because of all the issues we've talked about with wood, it grays out, it shrinks, it does all this stuff. We started using the composite decking. So Sounds composite, like you. <laughs> yeah. Grays out and shrinks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Me too, actually, just saying. I shouldn't really pick on you. I'm saying, same. I'm graying out and shrinking. Well, wait a minute. You're older than me anyway by 11 days, right? So That's true. Yeah, so yes. you're, older you're older than me anyway. Older non-brother. Uh, yeah, and I, okay. just, I just look older. So yeah. com composite decking, and composite decking, it's made of um, different well, composites, no, right? And it's it's made so of wood, PVC. It's a blend of wood fibers and mm -hmm. plastic products, and that's what co mm -hmm. constitute the composite part. Um, right. And when they first came out, there was issues with them because the wood fibers would absorb would moisture. Swell. It would swell, start growing mold and mildew on the on the boards, and it, it, it and you, the more you power washed it, the more they got moldy. Um, they've since resolved that issue by capping it. So now they put mm -hmm. a, a a very hard uh, capping a, a wrap around the UV it. sealer on top of it. Yep. So now it's very stable, it's stable color. Uh, the downside is when you cut your ends, you you'll see the different colors in the end. So now that's why they're doing all of this uh, borders and this picture framing is to hide those end cuts that you would normally see. So uh, that's the composite. You can also do the cellular PVC. And, and well, that wait, go back one second. <laughs> so one of the beautiful things about the composites, though, is that you can heat them up. Yep. You know, with torches, whatnot. That's how they were able to bend that radius. Yep. You're going to do that. You can do it with wood. You need a steam box. Again, whole nother episode. Sure. But no, the PVC or the composite, that is one of the great things about it. You can bend a radius with it. Yep. Yeah. And it, it does it really well. They actually have blankets. And, you know, uh, from TimberTech, they have a blanket that you can put on both sides. You warm mm -hmm. it up and then you just grab it and bend it to where you want it and let go. Um, and you can put it into a template if you know where you're gonna, going to be having right. it. So you set up your template if you need to bend a bunch of them. Or you can warm them up and just put them right in place and hold them there. And after a, a couple minutes with just securing yeah, them with some cool down, they, they kind of retain that shape. And then they stay. The biggest exactly problem I ever had with the composites was literally the, the miters. Yeah. Because they said, oh, it's stable. And I put together beautiful miters and it would shrink. Yep. And I'd have these nasty looking gaps and they were uneven. And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I was a carpenter once. Uh huh. But see, now you use the glue because they come with a PVC glue and you can glue those miters yeah. together as you do it. And then they'll stay right there. So uh, okay. th then you got to go to the PVC, which is going to be mm -hmm. color through. So that is all PVC. It's 100% uh, recycled uh, plastics. And it's going to be the same color all the way through, which makes it a lot more uh, stable. And also, what happens now too is you can use your end cuts. You don't necessarily need to picture frame everything. Right. So let's talk about my favorite new tool, there, Sonar. <laughs> Speed deck. <laughs> no. <laughs> Speed deck. Spacing. Let's talk spacing. We we kind of touched on this when we were talking wood before. What kind of spacing yeah. should we use on if we have a wood, a natural wood deck? Well, a wood that splashes back, you powder them together as tight as you can. Yep. Because as they dry out, they will get narrower and you will end up with quarter inch gaps. So just like this. Uh, most of the plastics, or I would say the composites even, I would not do nothing more than an eight penny nail. Because uh -huh. even the composites tend to shrink some. Right. But when you get into the true PVCs and, and so on, a lot of the newest stuff, you can do something like this. But again, keep in mind your climate. Right. You know, because I don't care what any sales brochure says. It will move some. It will expand and contract. You're not going to beat Mother Nature. Right. So. Yeah. And if you do have butt joints, then you do definitely want to leave those gaps. They have a recommended gap mm -hmm. for your butt joints. So depending on the time of year that you're installing it, that gap is going to change. If you're installing it in early spring and it's 35 degrees out and you mm -hmm. run those boards tight by the middle of June, though they're all going to be mushroomed and cupped because they've grown that much and expanded. So you, yeah. you want to make sure you put those gaps in there. If it's the middle of summer, 
you may, you know, and it's 100 degrees out, then you may want to go ahead. Yeah, and leave your decking laying out for a couple of days while you're building yeah. the framework and it'll start shrinking and then you can actually check the moisture content. Yeah. I mean, literally you don't want your moisture content when you're putting it down over 20% and the treated lumber is going to come at 100%. I yes. mean, it's insane how wet it is. So. Yes. So spacing, that's, you know, you want to run them tight, but and if you're using composites, you may want to use something like this to actually, you know, create some gaps so that you get water drainage, leaves, the little helicopters that come off the, the maple trees. You need that kind of stuff to be able to fall through there. You don't want to mm -hmm. have it getting stuck in there all the time. So um, kind of think a, a couple of them are, there's Trex, there's TimberTech, there's Azac, there's Tamco. There's a bunch of different manufacturers of these PVC products and, and or um, your composite decking. So check them out. Find one you really like. Prices are going to be all over the board. So find yeah. one that fits your budget and, and, and you can go for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's all nice stuff. Yes. So um, we talked about the spacing. Next up is fastener options. So you can right. buy one of these fancy camo things and it screws it down. It goes through the edge right through there so you don't see it. And it all gets toenailed. And you can secure all your boards down with that. And you get a nail on this, a screw on this side. And a screw on mm -hmm. this side, so you just you can you can set it right down in there and secure the board. You can do that for decking. You can do uh, composite decking or wood. It works on either one. All right. Well, the nice thing about that is that it controls the the angle of the screw very well, so that you get very little tear out. You don't break off corners. Right. Um, yeah. You could definitely freehand it. Yes. But that does work very nicely. Yep. But. There's lots of play. other options out there. Let's keep moving along. Sure. So next up, you can do these clips, and there's hundreds of different kinds of clips. So this is just one. Take your biscuit joiner, you put a, a, a biscuit mm -hmm. groove in the edge, or you can, if it's a composite decking, it may come with that groove already in it. Right, and I've then seen you can, that, where they make the groove right into them now. Right. So then you just put that clip in there. And uh, one of the things that's good about this is you can come back later. If you need to replace a board, you can take that those screws out and get those boards out then. Some of the other clips. Well, the other nice thing is because you're not screwing the board down, you're only screws, screwing the biscuit down tight, Yep. which to me was always the great thing. Now those boards can move. They can expand and contract freely. Yep. Uh, they don't bind and so on. So one of the odd things is, you, you know, normally when you build a deck, you put your skirt board on, you might leave your decking overhang inch and a half, two inches. But I would actually let it overhang maybe two and a half and then, because you can always come back the next year and straighten the edge out again after it's sawed its own level. Right. You know, because well, we've, we've all seen that would be the right way to do it. But you can't, you know, if you're doing a job for somebody and you want to get paid, yeah. you can't say, oh, yeah, and I'll be back in a year to trim that edge. So <laughs> you know, the and day we're done, it might look good. So I might give you a little extra where it can be trimmed. Right. And we've all been on those decks that uh, the board dances around the, the screw just right. <laughs> uh, practically yeah. pops up out at you. Right. Right. Well, that's just it though. The screw technology has gotten crazy. I mean, you don't, you know, there's, you go to box stores and there's all kinds of screws there. And unfortunately people keep buying drywall screws for everything. Right. And you know, there's exterior screws that are self drilling, self countersinking and all that. And there's some really great options for screws out there, but they do get costly. Sure. You know, like like when we talked about the IPE, I mean, you got to pre-drill yeah. the countersink everything. You, you, the screw's not going to do it. Right. And we always use stainless steel screws in those. Correct. Well, and you yeah, know, so. or a hot double dip. They have to be ACQ safe. They need to be able mm -hmm. to work with the pressure-treated lumber, the pressure-treated framing. Otherwise, yeah. they're going to rot out within a year, and then all your decking's flopping and, and, and it's loose. Right. So yeah. you want to check it out. So the next thing, there's another different one. There's a different style. You could do this. If you can get underneath it and you can screw these all together, they get nailed mm -hmm. down on the top and then you screw them on the side. I don't know if I like that or not. I mean, on a raised deck, it's fine. But I mean, a lot of the raised decks we've done, we put the gutter pans in them and things like that. So that wouldn't necessarily work. But that was right. just, you know, an easy way out for somebody that makes extruded galvanized metal parts. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but th th there's those kinds of things out there. Next up is these. So if you buy the Dogging. composite, yeah. So look at that. That already has the groove in it. So you could use the clips like we saw in the first one, or you could put these down and these, hmm. these just get nailed down to the top of the joist. 
and then you just walk along and clip all your boards in. Boom, done. Just like that. Move so you on. notice that it has a groove, a special groove in the side of that deck. Yep. Oh, sorry, so that snapped. it snaps into those. So it's a snap lock kind of setup. <laughs> snap, like that. Like, boom. See, like that. Boom, done. Yeah. Yeah. So you can also do these. Now, you were talking about self-drilling, self-tapping. Yeah. That's And those of, look to be, yeah. But, you know, and on that gray deck done well, it doesn't really look bad. The screws don't bother me. Like, you really, once you start this third, fourth beer, you don't notice them. But... <laughs> It, that doesn't bother me. It, what bothers me is if you don't snap a line. Yeah. You know, if your screws are going down a single joist, going kind of... Yeah. Get the two ends. Just put something in there to hold it, but snap lines. Keep right. them straight. And then make sure this gap, this distance from the edge to the screw is the same on all of them. You know? As close as you can, absolutely. Yeah. Just so. It's the little details that make the big difference. That. Well, and even that butt joint there where you see the four screws, yep. that's not on a single two by. Right. You know, so don't try to do that on a single two by. Put a block there. Mm -hmm. No, you don't only need blocks every so often. Put blocks in there, double up a joist where you think you're going to do it. So when we talked earlier about doing things on thirds and using 12 foot decking. Right. So maybe every third joist, you got to double up just so that you have something to break everything on. And it's going to give you a better finish. Right. Yeah, it's going to look a lot better. So last up is uh, layout, or we got two more things here, layout. So you can do diagonal like this. You can also do these color variations and change. So when you change direction, mm -hmm. you change color. Kind of, it, it gives a little bit more detail to your deck. Like this here, changes color at the steps. So that's also a good way to call out those. It's a visu visual separation that yeah. you want. Right, or the, the drunken step right there to make sure that you, you know, like you can see down here, these are all the same color. At night, you're not going to notice that and somebody's going to trip and fall up the stairs or down. But there's a light. I'm standing in front of it. Oh, that's right. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah, there is a light. So. But, yeah, so, but the other thing too is that design and that decking is not something you do when you're putting down the decking. It, you do yeah. that layout when you're designing your deck so that you can figure out where everything's going to break. And again, you need framing underneath for that. So, right. This you know, is whether it's solid blocking horizontally, vertically, whatever, but plan ahead. Right. So that's all planned out ahead of time before you can put that decking down like that. So next up is there, right there. So we got color options. So again, you can see where they the steps, they did a different color than the main part of the deck. The other thing is when you're staining or you're gonna pick any of these, is this out in the sun? Is this in the shade? Mm -hmm. If this sits out in the sun and it faces west, you may not want to have a dark deck like this because it, especially if it's composite, right. it could be hot as hell to walk on and you're going to need mm -hmm. shoes the whole time. So that is going to kind of drive the color options. And that's why I think the grays are so popular right now is because the grays don't absorb a lot of heat and then, right. uh, you know, and, and, they, and they look good. And you can call out different areas and, and have this all stained and do a little different. And I think that's right. one advantage to putting wood down is it doesn't get hot like that. It doesn't absorb all that heat right. like a composite deck would. So No, you just got to be a little more careful when you shop for your wood. Correct. It's so, all consistent. Same lot, same bunk, whatever you want to say. Correct. Because if it's from the same run, it'll all be pretty consistent on width and thickness. Right. And you can do borders, uh, picture framing like we saw in some of the other <laughs> things there too. So a lot of great right. options with color. If you're doing it all out of wood, then you can stain those colors in. But if you're using a mm -hmm. composite, then you just order the different color decks to, to highlight those areas you want to highlight. So mm -hmm. with that, how do we do, Sonar? Oh, great. Fantastic. How, how many how many minutes did we pull oh, off we're there? Push, we're pushing 30. Oh, wow. Okay. So, all right. Oh, well, it's a good thing we were flying through this. That's it. Let's get out of here then. <laughs> so uh, okay. next time we're going to talk, uh, I think we're going to railings next. So, I believe we need railings. So Stairs and railings or just railings? Uh, no, railings, or maybe we'll just talk steps and then railings next. I'm not, I'm not, we got to figure that out and see how we're going to mm. do it. So that sounds like two topics right there. Ooh. So, all right. So make sure you stay tuned. Make sure you click on that subscribe button and uh, leave us a note below. If we miss something, I'm sure you're going to be able to correct us. You'll have to let us know. <laughs> That's right. So with <laughs> that, keep it square and level. Until, Until next, next time. time. Until next time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a sweet. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I was hitting so many buttons over here with yeah. those pictures. I was like, oh, the credits. Oh, oh the credits. That's right. Wait, hurry, hurry, hurry. <laughs> I, that's, uh, we had we had a sonar heavy button pushing today. <laughs>